What's going on everyone? In today's video, I'm going to explain why I think the market should bounce either tomorrow or on Monday. Today's video is going to be much more nerdy. I'm going to give the best case scenario as well as the worst case scenario. And of course, I'm always open to being wrong, but I have been catching market bottoms consistently over the past few years, and I've been sharing them with you guys here. So uh, today's video is going to be much more nerdy. It's going to be pretty fun. And uh, yeah, man, let's get started right with it. Let's start off by explaining what happened in the market right now. So the NASDAQ is down 5% on the close. The SPY closed 3.55%. The IWM closed 4%. Large tech stocks closed 5 to 9%. ARC closed 9.5%. So I'm not here to say, look, oh, the market is going to bounce. Da -da -da. There's still a very tangible and logical chance that the market falls much lower tomorrow. But if you were to ever go long, in my opinion, it would be today or tomorrow if we end up falling lower. So I'm going to explain the bullish case um, first, okay? And by the way, I never knew you can do this right here. Boom. I, ne I never knew you could do that. That's crazy. It feels so much better <laughs> to look at. All right. So here's a chart of the NDX. All right. And um, basically today, the NASDAQ was down 5%. All right. So I went back and looked at every single time the Nasdaq was down over 4.5% in a day. So I looked for red days over 4.5%. So basically what I'm looking at is when the Nasdaq falls, right? What happens the day afterward and the day, basically what happens in the next two days. <laughs> so as you can see here, as the COVID crash began, we fell right here on this candle 4.9%. What happened on the next day? <clears throat> so today was potentially that 4.9%. Tomorrow, meaning, you know, the next day, we ended up gapping down, turning green, and then Monday we reclaimed the high. Okay, so that's one instance. Basically, the next day, we, if we gap lower, big chance that we turn green and then uh, rally into Monday. Okay, so that's one instance. Once more, right here, we fell down 6%. What happened the next day? We uh, bounced higher, okay? Uh, the next day, uh, this what, so this wasn't a 4.5% drop, but this was a 4%, 4.3% drop, right? So we fell. We didn't bounce the next day. We fell even further the next day. So if you ha would have, um, we, we fell even further and it was 9.2%, okay? So... If you would have, you know, averaged down over here like I did, would have made bank. And that's what happened. And it bounced the next day. But it didn't make um, any substantial dent in the original day's candle. So this was Thursday. This was Friday. And this was Monday. So if we gap down substantially, I'm not obviously we're not going to fall 9%. But uh, we could see technically in this instance, we didn't make any substantial headway into Thursday's candle. But we did bounce after Friday if we fell lower, okay? And then once more, we gapped down 12%. If you had bought calls, they worked out the next day. And then again, we fell 4%. If you had bought calls, you know, obviously, this we closed 4%. We opened probably at like 5% negative. So if you would have bought calls, uh, the next day worked as well. And then again, over here, we were down 4%, opened lower, and then we gapped up. I did this until 1990. So I went back all the way to 1990 on the NDX and I found 85 to 90% of the time the NASDAQ ends up bouncing either the next day or the day after. So um, if we gap down tomorrow, there is a high chance that we bounce on Monday. But already there is a high chance that we bounce tomorrow. So this is just purely statistics. This is an 85% to 90% chance that these calls work. And um, obviously that's the only time we take any of these trades. Because currently right now we're obviously in a very bearish market. We don't counter trade unless there is a substantial reason to counter trade. We were bearish all throughout the morning. We shorted the crap out of the market this morning and then we bought some calls at the bottom if they don't work out they don't work out but shoot or shoot this is a very high reward um possibility here 
that's um, basically one uh, thing that I want to show, right? The next thing that I want to show is also equally nerdy. So let's take a look at this. There have been two days in the past 25 years when the S&P 500 futures were down 3% and the 10-year Treasury futures were also down 1%. October 9th and 2008. So let's go ahead and back in history and check out what happened on those two days. And these are, so I'm looking at the NASDAQ chart because we're holding QQQ calls. So this is October 9th. What ended up happening was we gapped lower the next day. Um, and then Monday, we completely overtook all of today's gains. So Thursday, right? Today's Thursday, we fell. And uh, you can see on October 9th, we were down 4%. But today, Thursday, we're down 5%. Friday, that means we would gap down and have a bullish close. Then on Monday, uh, the equivalent of this would be we would close above Thursday's high. Now, I don't think that would happen, but that's uh, the statistic here. Um, it shows that we ended up bouncing uh, after this happened within two trading days. So there's that for October 9th, 2008. Now let's take a look at the second time this happened, March 18th, 2020. We can see we were down 4% on the day. Uh, intraday, we were down much lower, but we closed 4%. And then the next day was green, and we overtook uh, the prior day's high. So in both instances, within two trading days, which is the equivalent of Monday, we should at least be green. In both of these instances, so in both of these instances, um, we've overtaken the high of the day. I don't think that happens, but um, that is basically showing that, you know, this doesn't happen that much in history. And again, if there is a reason to go long, it would be at times of overextension like this. So it's going to be very interesting to see if tomorrow we end up bouncing or if we gap down. My plan for tomorrow is going to be if we do gap down, um, we're obviously going to have to play the move to the downside. But then as we get closer and closer to levels of support, I'm going to start scaling into calls. And um, then depending on how we close, I'm going to buy into uh, Monday. Uh, no, I'm probably going to buy into Wednesday expiration um, QQQ at the money calls if we end up closing green or like well. Right. So, yeah, that's going to be my plan for tomorrow. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this nerdiness. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the um, the charts themselves. I forgot to talk about the bearish case. So this is the bearish case for what will end up happening if we don't bounce. So here's a this is the chart of the Nasdaq, right? Five percent drop the next day. So again, looking at this, this is September of 2020. All right. This was after the COVID crash. We were just we just got injected with a lot of money and we made new all time highs. And this inflection point was basically also in September was when like a new wave of the virus was starting. A lot of lockdown news was happening as well. And um, it was very obviously very bearish for people and like the economy and everything in general. So people were very, very afraid of further lockdowns and everything for this time. So this was the backdrop. And also we were at all time highs. Okay. So we fell 5% the next day off of an all time high. Okay. So now say for example, today was that day, Thursday, Friday, we end up falling even lower. What, what ends up happening during Friday? Let me open this what ends up happening during Friday is intraday we end up dropping over five percent <throat> and then we bounce and uh, end up bouncing and closing uh four percent four point five percent off the lows so basically what's that sh what that's showing us is that there is a chance obviously there's going to be a very high chance regardless regardless whether it's the bullish or the bearish case regardless there is going to be a high chance that we fall even lower tomorrow. So we have to have puts on the table. We have to be ready to play. We have to be ready to scalp puts. Okay. That's number one. Number two, even in the most bull uh, the bearish case, there is a chance of the market 
bouncing intraday. So if we fall even lower intraday, that would basically mean that that is a better buying opportunity for a potential bounce intraday for a close higher, right? But we didn't end up bouncing on Monday. What ended up happening, you know, on the equivalent of Monday was we gapped down even lower 4.8%. And we, you know, gapped down. It was super, super weak. And I remember people were like, that's it. This is the end. We're coming back. Uh, I, people were talking about the spy was going back to, oh my God, man. Like, ugh, 180 on the spy, I remember people were talking about. Yeah, uh, that was that was funny times. Um, let's just look at that. What was that number? What was talking? About? Yep, people were talking about 180 on the spy, man. <laughs> but we never ended up doing that anyway. <clears throat> so the bearish case shows that um, <laughs> shows that there is. A chance for a downside move and then a uh, intraday moved back to the upside. All right, cool. And I went back and tracked this back to the 1990s. There was a, a 1990, and um, approximately like 10 to 15 percent of the time that we've had over a five percent move, uh, we never ended up bouncing back any substantial amount. So that is a chance, but again, it's a very slim chance. And especially given the chan- given the fact that there's also that news with the reserve of uh, the sorry with the um the spy being uh the futures being down three percent as well as the um treasury uh bond futures being down one percent in both of those instances you know uh we've bounced so overall this is a good chance that we bounce tomorrow and Monday that's the bearish case. Now let's take a look at the charts for the SPY, the NASDAQ, the IWM, and the crypto markets very, very quickly. All right, I'm going to be honest. I don't know what I was just talking about, (laughs) but here's the chart of the NASDAQ. And regardless of whether we bounce tomorrow and into Monday or not, there should be at least a 2.5 to 3% fall in the NASDAQ tomorrow. So um, number one, statistically, we should be gapping down and opening red. So there's that. Number two, let's see where a 2.5 or a 3% drop would be on the NASDAQ. So a 2.5% drop would bring us to approximately 304 to 305. A 3% drop would bring us to uh, 303. So basically, we should be seeing uh, 304.75 to uh, 303.50 tomorrow. So that is going to be where we begin to scale into calls. Until we hit at least 2%, uh, there's no reason to really look into calls. So there's tomorrow is predominantly going to be a day of just buying puts, following the momentum down and buying puts. If by some miracle we are opening green, which I doubt, um, you know, upon doing more research on what the price action and everything was in the past. Um, yeah, so the calls that we're holding, holding overnight, hopefully they still are remaining uh, within our 10% boundary. And we don't gap down way too low so that our 10% stop loss uh, ends up being a bit higher. It's like 15%. But regardless, I mean, it's better than being 30% down. So, <laughs> so regardless, uh, tomorrow on the NASDAQ, we have a very high chance of bouncing on Friday and on Monday. Regardless of whether we bounce or not, there is at least a 2.5 to 3% fall intraday. And after that fall, we end up bouncing intraday. So we're going to play puts until we hit at least 2.5 to 3% fall. I hope that makes sense. So we're going to play puts all day until we hit at least... Um, Basically, 303 to 304.50 on the NASDAQ. And um, until then, you know, then that's when we're going to start scaling into longs. And uh, again, you know, we can still fall even lower than that. We can fall to 300 on the NASDAQ tomorrow. But the odds of us bouncing back, even on a very, very bearish close, is basically guaranteed. 
that even if we hit 300, we shouldn't be closing at 300. We will be bouncing back higher. Okay, does that make sense? So that's that um, for the NASDAQ. All right, um, let's just quickly take a look at the SPY as well. Uh, same concept on the SPY, you know, like we're, if we're going to fall down at least two to five. Uh, so basically, just real quick, I mean, look, like it's very simple. 410 is going to break, most likely, tomorrow on the SPY. And then 405 is going to break. And then between 400 to 405 is going to be the spot where people should start thinking about buying calls. Not at, you know, not until we hit those levels. So, um, yeah, once we hit those levels, then a chance of an intraday bounce is almost basically guaranteed, but at those levels only. There's no reason to start scaling into calls up here until we break down below 410 or at least 407. All right, so there's that for the SPY. There's that for the NASDAQ. Let's also just take a look at uh, Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, um, let me just put this on a log chart. All right, so on a log chart, we are back at this very, very important level of uh, support. Very, very important trend line here. And um, back here, this was a trend line basically that signified like a break to the upside. And then we retested it multiple times as well. And then we broke down below. We've never been above it um, until we broke back above it in March. Then now we are retesting that level currently. All right. So basically you can go long against this level here at 35, uh, eight, right. And um, have a little stop loss below essentially 35, five. But this is a pretty good, this is at support, Bitcoin's at support, but this is the early signs of capitulation. There could be some capitulation to the downside. You could see that the MACD is extremely weak. You can see that the RSI is also extremely weak. Um, there's a lot more room to the downside. And, um, but we are at major trend line support. So if you want to take the risk and go long on Bitcoin, that, I mean, this is a really, really important level of support here, this trend line. So if this breaks, uh, we can easily see 33. We can easily see this lower wick over here at around 34.5. So um, yeah, there is that. I mean, really, Bitcoin needs to hold above 35. I mean, essentially needs to hold above 35,000. If it doesn't hold above 35,000, then 34,500 uh, and 34,000 are on the table. Overall, the market looks, there's a high chance that the market bounces on Friday or Monday. Uh, Bitcoin is at support. Um, things clearly look uh, bearish right now, but there's a chance that they bounce. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, make sure to comment, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you.